Hello everybody, Smith here, and welcome back to some more Beady Armoury. Now, over the months and very nearly years, wow, um, yeah, over the time I've been doing the mailbag streams, I've been sent some exceptional craft. The ones that really stick out in my mind are Titan RT's Lekken series of craft and Lego Black Slapters, uh, footage in the background of some of them. Uh, what makes these crafts so amazing is partially the way they're built, the way they're designed, the way they're all set up, their physical tuning, I suppose you could call it, um, but also the uh, the way the AI is set up, the AI tuning, and you're never really going to have a truly spectacular craft unless you master that. And so after God knows how many requests, this finally is a tutorial on the basics of AI tuning. This is going to be split into two parts. This part is going to focus more on the principles and the theory, and the second part, coming quote soon, unquote, will be looking more about the practicalities and the little bit of finagling you might have to do with your craft to get it performing just right with the AI tune. I've tried to pitch this one at a complete beginner level. Um, we're not going into the more advanced tuning options because that would take hours and I'm not that knowledgeable about it myself. So it's just the basic three settings for the AI tune and uh, you don't have to have any prior knowledge of um, aircraft control systems or uh, PID controllers. Although if you do, I'll throw a couple of bits in there for you. Um, anyway, we've got a bit of a task ahead of us, so uh, let's get started. Now the traditional way to access the settings that we'll be talking about is in the space plane hangar and that's probably where you'll want to do it once you've finalised your tune and you want to sort of save the craft with it. Uh, you right click on the BD Armoury AI Autopilot unit, uh, you expand the PID controller settings, uh, there will be a button there if you want to go into some of the other options but we're not going to be dealing with those in this tutorial, we're just going with the basic tune. Uh, more recent versions of BD Armoury give you an option whilst you're flying your craft. We're here out here on the runway with our little Lynx and Ghosty Kerman in the cockpit. Not going to have a lot to do though, Ghosty Kerman. And on the toolbar on the right, you can see the BD Armoury AI button. And if we click that, that brings up the AI manager. There's a little PID controller button there. We click that and we get the three settings we are worried about. Uh, you can also see there's a, a button here as well to expand the options, but we will not be going into that. Uh, for those of you who do know about a PID controller, the uh, the steer power, that's the proportional setting, the steer correction, that's the integral setting, and the steer damping, that's the derivative setting. But if you don't know about that, don't worry. We are going to go through those uh, sort of one at a time explaining exactly what they mean. We're going to start off, though, with the steer power, the proportional setting. Uh, this, in its usual configuration, will go from 0.1 all the way up to 20. Um, but to sort of explain what that does and what that means, we kind of have to discuss a couple of terms. Uh, more specifically, we have to discuss static and dynamic stability. Now, these are two terms which have different meanings depending on exactly what context they're in, but we're going to be talking about them sort of in the sense they're usually used to, uh, to talk about oscillating systems. So first I want to talk about static stability, and to help demonstrate this, I have got a little pendulum. Um, it's, it's my pen knife tied to a shoelace. It, it turns out pendulum making materials are in pretty short supply in my house, um, but it'll do the job. Now uh, a pendulum, a simple pendulum like this, has a, a stable state, which is just when it's dangling there like this. Uh, but a pendulum displays static stability, and by that I mean that when I move it away from that stable state, there is a force, uh, in this case provided by gravity, trying to sort of pull it back to that, uh, to that stable position. And the further I move it away, the larger that force is. And if I let it go, it will move, at least initially, towards that stable position, like this. And then we get some other stuff going on, but we'll, uh, we'll come to that a little bit later. For the autopilot in uh, BD Armoury, however, uh, things are a little bit different, and this is where it requires a little bit of a leap of imagination. There isn't just a, a singular stable state that you want your aircraft to be in. No, the state you want your aircraft to be in is sort of pointing vaguely towards the enemy, such that when it fires its guns, it will hit the opposing aircraft. It's not so much a stable state, more a kind of a desired direction. And if you can sort of wrap your head around that, then... Um, yeah, this whole tuning thing becomes a lot easier. Now, the static stability of your craft with regards to this desired state uh, comes from the fact that 
If your craft isn't pointing in the desired direction, the AI will try to turn it such that it is. And the further it is away from the correct direction, the harder it will try to, uh, to turn the craft, the harder it will try to line up that shot such that you can potentially get a kill. Um, now, with the uh, PID controller, this is regulated by the steer power setting. The higher this is, the, the harder the craft will try to steer to manoeuvre to do pretty much everything. The harder it will deflect the control surfaces to try and turn the craft around to, uh, to get to that point. Um, now, a naive interpretation of this might lead you to the conclusion that, well, that's simple. We just whack it up to 20, the craft will try and turn as quickly and as hard as possible, and we'll get our target in our sights as, uh, as soon as we can. Um, well, not quite. Here we have a fight between two of my lynxes and two of my cyclones, and for the lynxes I've gone and set the steer factor up to its maximum of 20, and both the other two settings, the uh, steer correction and the steer damping, down to their absolute minimum. And pretty quickly it becomes apparent that something isn't quite right there. Our craft is trying really, really hard to turn itself to face the target, but it just cannot line that shot up. Now going back to our pendulum from earlier, that was a statically stable system. It was always experiencing a push, trying to get it back to that stable point, that desired point uh, in this case. But it wouldn't stop when it got there. There was nothing really to stop it when it got there, and it would just swing right through. It would experience a force pushing it back the other way, and the whole thing would just keep repeating. And within a reasonable time frame, it wouldn't actually settle down into that stable state. This brings us on to the concept of dynamic stability, um, which in this context is the ability of a system not just to actually reach its desired point, but also to sort of stay there, to zero in on it as quickly as is possible. So back to our PID controller and we want to introduce the second setting we're looking at today, and that is the steer damping. Just to recap, the steer power, this will have an effect such that it will cause the AI to try to turn the aircraft to face the desired direction, proportional to how far away it is from facing the, uh, the desired direction, and also proportional to uh, the setting here, the number of this setting here. Steer damping, this will actually try to prevent the craft from turning, um, proportional to how fast it is turning, and also proportional to this setting here. Now that might sound slightly counterintuitive, but uh, try to think of it like this. Your craft is flying along, it's facing away from the desired direction, quite a lot away from the desired direction, but isn't turning. At this point, the effect from the steer power will be very high, the effect from the steer damping will be non-existent, so the craft will start to turn. Now imagine it as it's sort of approaching the desired direction. Uh, as it approaches the desired direction, the effect from the steer power will start to decrease um, almost to zero, but the craft will still be turning, and so the steer damping effect will be quite high. The, A the overall effect on the AI, therefore, will be to try and stop the craft from turning, hopefully perfectly lining up the shot in as short a time as is possible. Another fight then, again between my Lynxes and my Cyclones, but this time the Lynxes have a much higher steer damping setting. And while they might not be turning as quickly as they would without the steer damping, the effect is surprisingly small and is more than compensated for by the fact that they can now actually line up a shot. A couple of things to note here. Uh, first of all, if your craft is aerodynamically stable, that will sort of naturally build in some steer damping to your aircraft, but A, uh, if your craft is manoeuvrable enough to be a competitive dogfighter, that won't be anywhere near enough, and B, that stability is just going to differ depending on what axis we're talking about, pitch, roll, or yaw, and so getting the, uh, getting the steer damping right in the AI is absolutely crucial. The second and important thing to note is that getting these two settings right will normally be the first step of doing a basic AI tune. Getting the right uh, steer power, getting the right steer damping, making sure each of those values are balanced, not just with your aircraft but also with each other. Uh, and getting that right before you move on to look at the steer correction, which we will ourselves do shortly. But just before we do that, I just want to go and talk a little bit more about getting a balance. So when you're trying to get the uh, the right value for these two settings, there's another trap to fall into. There's another naive interpretation which would say, well, 
obviously let's just increase the steer power to maximum and let's just increase the steer damping until it behaves itself trying to get the uh, the lowest possible uh, viable value for the steer damping again not quite um I mean, first of all, depending on your craft, depending on the control surfaces, depending on its aerodynamic stability, um, you might get some oversteer, which the steer damping can do absolutely nothing about, and which might lead your craft to flip out, or at least lose a lot of speed uh, that it could really do without losing, leaving it as a sitting duck, or it might just mean you can't just line up a shot. Um, and that sort of ties into my second point, and that is we're dealing with basic three setting tuning, and this will apply equally to all three axes of rotation, to pitch, to yaw, and to roll. Now, pitch will be the primary turning axis in a dogfight, and once you've got that right, there are things you can do to correct any instabilities you find in the uh, roll or the yaw axis, which we'll be dealing with next time when we look more at sort of the practical elements of uh, getting this basic tune right. But for now, you might find that the whole thing is just, as I said, a balance. It's finding a compromise between all of those things so that you get a craft which performs as well as it can do. So we move on to take a look at the final setting, uh, the steer correction, equivalent to the integral in a standard PID control. You'll also notice I've got the, uh, well, the current standard tune for my links dialed in here. So, um... Well, I mean, what's left for our steer correction to do? I mean, we've got the uh, the steer power. That will make sure we can turn our craft around promptly. We've got the steer damping. You know, that makes sure that it it won't overshoot and will um, get a nice fix on the, on the desired direction we want the craft to turn in. So what's left? Well, those two are all very well if the desired direction is always the, is always the same, if it's stationary. But one of the things you might notice in combat is your opponents are normally incredibly rude and won't just sit there and let you kill them. Um, I know, right? Uh, let's take a, a bit of a closer look at this. Yet another fight then, this time between two of my lynxes, and for both of these I've set the steer correction down to its absolute minimum value. And uh, these two fly around each other, they will get the occasional shot off, but while they're turning hard and they're doing so in a stable fashion, they're not really getting as many shots away as they should be. So, um, why is this? I'll try to avoid as many technical details as possible, but uh, to start with, let's just imagine a simple scenario. You have two craft, a more manoeuvrable craft and a less manoeuvrable craft. Uh, they're into a bit of a turning competition. The more manoeuvrable craft is on the tail of the less manoeuvrable craft, um, but they're just sort of going round in a circle. For the more manoeuvrable craft, uh, the desired direction, the stable direction, the direction it wants to point in to, uh, to get a shot off at its, uh, at its opponent, is constantly changing. And because they're, uh, they're going around in a circle, it's changing in the same direction and at the same rate. Now, if you just had a controller with the proportional and derivative terms, if our AI only had the steer power and steer damping terms, the craft, the more manoeuvrable craft, would always be lagging behind that desired direction. Uh, it's just a feature of the mathematics of this kind of control system. Uh, it's not a fatal flaw, really, because, you know, dogfights are never really just a single turning competition. You've never got two craft just going in a circle. No, dogfights are kind of all over the place. So, just as my two craft here do occasionally do, you will occasionally get an opportunity to get a shot off. Um, but it's far from ideal, really. I mean, if you're trying to turn to line up a shot, you would like to be able to do so. Um, so what you really need is something to compensate for however fast your uh, desired direction is turning. Um, some kind of correction for the steering, if you will. I hope you see where I'm going with this. So, you might have guessed it, this is where steer correction comes in. Um, now, if this is too low, your craft won't turn enough. The shots will be sort of falling short as your craft is trying to turn to line up the shot. If it's too high, your craft will be turning a little bit too much. The shots will be going in front of the aircraft in that kind of turning scenario. Um, I will be going through a bit more detail, some hints and tips as to how to set these um, in the next part. But, as I said, this is... Just more sort of theory stuff. Uh, when you are tuning your craft, the latest versions of BD Armory, the AI manager, uh, does come with this handy little question mark button. And if you click that, you get these little uh, these little hints and tips. Well, these little reminders popping up of exactly what each of these uh, what each of these settings do. Um, now, I did say this was just going to be sort of like the theory behind the uh, the tuning. And next time we'll get onto the more practical stuff, but. 
I didn't think it was fair to leave you completely empty-handed in that regard, so we're just going to go over a very, very quick set of instructions for uh, how you might go about tuning your craft. So we're here in the space plane hangar with one of my cyclones, a very early version of one of my cyclones actually. I think this is kind of like the first um, working version. I did the first kind of official version that went up in my Steam Workshop. Um, and once again, just to reiterate, I will be going through this in more detail in the next part. But uh, to give you a kind of an idea of what happens, uh, let's click on this the uh, AI Autopilot. Let's bring up the PID controller. So here you can see this is the default tune that just comes with this uh, with this unit. It's it's the same because well, it's designed to fly a craft reasonably well no matter what it is, whether it's a, a tiny tiny fighter or a, a massive bomber. It you know it's supposed to do um, do reasonably well in all of them. Sort of a jack of all trades, master of none. Um, I mean that's all well and good, but. If you've got a decent craft, I mean, particularly if you followed my tutorials on uh, stability and balancing and the intermediate fighter design one, then you might want to try the alternative default tune, which is going for um, 17 on the steer power, uh, 0.5 on the steer correction, and 5 on the steer damping. Now this, um, for the more advanced user, is recommended as sort of a, a default tune to be going on with, and then what I would do is I would take this up, uh, fly it in some dogfights. If it was just hideously unstable, if it was flipping all over the place, obviously I'd bring the steer power down. Um, if it was a little unstable, I might try seeing if I could just damp that out with a bit more steer damping, otherwise bring it down. Um, you might find your craft is a little too stable. I mean, there are, other, there are tweaks I'd probably make to the aircraft in this case, but you might want to try upping the steer power. The steer damping, you might find even with full steer power, it's still a little sluggish, maybe go down on the steer damping. It's sort of a bit of trial and error and experimentation with these two, but once you've got those sorted, you move on to the steer correction. I've sort of already mentioned this, but just to go over it again, if your craft is not quite lining up the shot, the shots are falling behind the craft as you're turning to try and hit it, you might want to increase this, and if it's um, if it's actually oversteering a little bit, if the shots are going in front of the target craft as you're trying to turn, then you might want to bring it back down a bit. But anyway, yes, that is all for the, uh, for the theory, for the basic principles behind... Um, very basic AI tuning in BD Armoury. Um, as I've said many a time, I might as well say it again here, we'll be going through this in much more detail next time, a much more sort of practically led approach, including little things you can do to your aircraft to sort of, um, well, to sort of iron out any little creases without actually having to, um, without having to negatively affect it with the basic tune, you know, just in decreasing the steer power, increasing the steer damping, stuff like that. I'll leave you with some footage of two pairs of my cyclones going head to head. One, the original version of the craft we were just looking at, and two, the version with the uh, the rough tune I just hastily slapped on it. That's the T version, and they do win this fight, actually. I mean, it's a missile kill and not the gun kill I was hoping for, but yeah, I'll take it. Um, anyway, yes, that will be all for today. I do hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Uh, I've probably missed something off so if you have any questions any comments please leave them down below and i will uh, reply to those as, those as soon as possible um <laughs> might be a while i've not been too good at keeping up with the comments recently hopefully that'll uh, that'll improve um but yes if you have enjoyed it or found it useful then please consider liking subscribing uh if you haven't already maybe following me on twitter maybe getting involved with the discord great Kerbal space program and bd armory community on there and as well as some other games war thunder tends to feature fairly prominently um all those links down in the description as well as links to the paypal and the patreon if you want to help support the channel you too could have a patron kerbal like you have seen today getting brutally killed over and over and over again um but yes, I will be back soon with some more BD Armory and in the near future with the uh, with the second part of this tutorial. But uh, for now, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.